It's interesting to see all of you with masks now. You're kind of social distanced. What's the deal? I bet you when you're in a restaurant over the weekend, you didn't have your mask on, did you? Anyway, I was told tonight to be nice. Um, I, ha I find it hard to be nice when I think of my kid being able to breathe all day in school. I would lay down my life for my child. And when I see tyranny like this, it is my child, my choice. Let me give you an example. Your chairwoman, or vice chair, who isn't here today, she is very proud to be earned the Planned Parenthood Advocates of Virginia's endorsement, access to reproductive care, to protect the rights of everybody. So when it comes to abortion, she's okay, my body, my choice. But when it comes to our children, yeah, let's get back to this is about masks. When it's my body, my kid's body, his choice. I'm the parent. That's on topic. Don't disrupt me. You always do that. I'm talking about masks. I'm trying to be nice. But stop cutting us off. I'm serious. This is another thing I'm going to hold up. My child, all children have fears. This is Beverly Anderson. Posted this on her Facebook. Quick reality check. This is intubation in case the mask seems uncomfortable. The boogeyman that your kids worry about under the bed are the school board members that are sitting up there. And yes, I'm pissed. Go ahead. Are you pointing for him to get me out of here? I have First Amendment rights. I could be angry because I have a kid who is going to be masked all day. And that is not okay. It's his body. I'm his parent. I get to choose what goes on him. And if you get somebody to get me out of here, go ahead. Do it. Do it. The nation's watching. Do it. Because I have my First Amendment rights. What you guys are doing is wrong. Do it. I, use me as an example. Use me. Please. Because what you guys are doing is wrong. You guys have attacked me. Dottie Holtz, you have put my real name, which put my son in danger, out on Facebook. And then you made fun of me wearing a mask. Mask. I said the word mask. I'm on topic. Wearing a mask and gloves while my mom was dying in a nursing home last year during COVID. So yes, I did wear a mask back then so I could be with her when she died. You are mean. You're all mean girls, except for Laura, Vicki, and Carolyn. You're mean girls and everybody knows it. And I feel sorry for these, the other three because I don't know how they work with you every day. And you're gonna vote against masks. You're gonna say, let our kids wear masks because it's a vindictive thing for you. That's all it is. It's all about vindictive and being mean schoolgirls that we all hated in school. But I have made it my life mission to fight you. We will recall you. We will get rid of Spence. And it is my mission. My son probably won't be going to 12th grade this year. And you've already tried to find out if he was in school. Yes, he is in school. You touch him, you will have a lawsuit on you. You put his name out there, yeah, you wanted to. So you know what? This masking has gotten really ugly. Really ugly, really fast. Chesapeake just said no masks. So we're, what, does COVID not? Okay. Does COVID? 30 does, seconds. Does COVID not know how to drive over to Chesapeake and stop at the border and not go in? Seriously. Y'all are a bunch of bullies. Those little kids deserve better. And I am going to make sure every parent, I give them the option of, hey, homeschool. I'll start a homeschool. I don't care. I'm going to do whatever it takes to get them out of your Marxist organization. Y'all make me sick. Good day. And you'll be hearing from me. Hi, I'm Crystal with The Real Life with Duke White. And we are here today with the March for Jesus in Hampton Roads. We are here with all denominations just to proclaim that Jesus is Lord in Hampton Roads. Hi, I am back with Jessica and Donnie at the March for Jesus. This is such a wonderful event today. What brought you guys out? What made you want to come today? Wow, um, just to be a part of what the churches in the area are doing is really what drew us here. It was? Okay, yeah. great. So how do you like it so far? Oh, it's been awesome. It's just been like 
clearing the atmosphere and the heavenlies. We've been getting to pray for people on the streets and people have been just so receptive. I mean, horn tonking, people clapping, people Facebook living. It's been awesome. What church are you from? Um, we are part of a house church. Oh, um, awesome. So yeah. That's the best kind. Yeah. Oh, we love it. Yes. Small groups, that is the best yes. kind. Yeah. Yeah. Do you mind sharing a little bit of your testimonies? Okay, go ahead. Okay. Um, I grew up in church uh, my whole life. Uh, was in the same church up until for 36 years. Uh, and grew up in that church and um, had my, grew up in a Holy Ghost church, um, New Life Christian Center, and great church. And just grew up with God always speaks, God always moves. You don't have to go to the doctor. You just believe God's going to heal you, that type of lifestyle. My parents, all that. And, um... You know, I had to walk that out at a certain age and had to realize that I couldn't just live in this house. I had to make my own connection with the Lord. And God right. took me through like a trial that made me a better Christian and made me a true believer in what, and a Christ follower. And, um, you know, all praise to Him, all that. Have I made mistakes? Of course. Have I always been perfect? Never. But God is redeeming, you know, and God's grace. Yes. And, um, she, we grew up in the same church together, and God had her on her own own journey. And we actually were friends in our youth group, but never thought of each other this way and then, until God set it up. So. Yeah. Oh, that's such a great love story. <laughs> it really <laughs> that's is. That's so sweet. God moved. It was yeah. awesome. Oh, that is so sweet. So you guys grew up together pretty much. Actually, so he says grow up loosely. I got saved in the church he was just talking about when I was 16. Um, I was with the Lord, you know, faithfully for about a year. And then I backslid. I wanted to do my own thing. I wanted my life the way I wanted it. So I backslid for about five years. And then the Lord just started parting the waters for me to come out of, you know, Egypt into the promised land. And I rededicated my life to the Lord in 2008. And just a series of events started, and we reconnected, and we were friends, and then, you know, fell in love. So, yeah. And then ever since then, it's just been God's grace. One after the other, he's just been growing and, and um, giving us our own heart for our own ministry. Actually, we just, he just said, you know, he's been at that church his whole life. That was my church. The only church I knew of is my church. The Lord just called us out of there this past January to kind of embark on our own ministry. And so we're currently doing a worship night on Saturday. Saturday nights right here on Granby Street in an old satanic bar. <laughs> Saturday nights we're there, we're worshiping the Lord. People are coming in and getting wow. touched and healed. And so yeah, we're just being led by the Holy Spirit. <laughs> and you're looking to grow for that. Well, well, we're not looking for it, but he's giving it to us. Right. That's awesome. <laughs> we're just like, okay, and Lord. God is going to, yeah, God's yeah, going to bless that. That yeah. is so awesome. That's good. That is so great. That is, that is awesome. So this event is about unity. It's bringing yes. the body of Christ together from all walks of life. Right. So what do you think is important about that? How do we get people out of the four walls to do mm. something like this all the time? I feel like... I feel like there is a, um, there's like a mandate as a believer that you can't just go from your living room to your church building and back to your living room. It's like the call of God to go out and preach the gospel and to live this life outside of the four walls. It's not easy, but you have to take that first step of faith that when you go to the grocery store, you're like, Lord, use me to touch somebody, use me, speak to me, let me be before you all the time. And when I'm walking, I'm going, God, do you want me to pray for that person? God, do you want me to speak to that person? God, how do you want me to interact in my outside the four walls? And then as you slowly step into that, then you start feeling comfortable with things like this. Things like what she just talked about, doing worship on Granby Street and having the doors wide open and not being afraid to say, hey, you come here for a second, let me talk to you about what God's doing. And that it's a constant mindset change. And for those like us that have maybe crossed over that boundary, then it's our job to encourage and yes, to reach out yes. and to say, hey brother, hey sister, come to march to Je for Jesus with me. Come to do some evangelism. Come to let's, let's go out and see if we can find somebody that needs Jesus together to reach out. For those that need that, that's, you know, that's how it works. You gotta, you gotta step out, then you gotta invite others. But then 
you also got to be that person that, you know, you got to love the Lord. You got to just do what he's called you to do. Exactly. Just be available. That's so right. I think it's so important what they're doing here for, he was talking about like, you know, the, the walk and everything, which is powerful, but there's so many different churches, denominations, uh, ethnicities, age ranges represented here. And that's what God's like really longing for, for his church in this season. Come together. Right. We can't you know, be divided. Thank you. Uh, like, just loosen all the jealousy, all the competition, all of that. Because what he has, this harvest that's coming, he needs us working together. Right. Full force, the whole body. Not right. everybody trying to do their exactly. own thing. We have to unite in yes. order to win souls. That's what it's yes. and, and specifically, the generation thing is really big right now. Like, we need the older generation to be helping lead the younger generation in full confidence and support and yes you can do it not cutting them off not silencing them not seeing maybe maybe some some youthful you know stuff in them that they've walked through but encouraging them hey i did it this is how you do it let's exactly. let's do this together you know i think that's really important also that you need it. all right well thank you guys so much thank for sharing you. that with this us awesome all right well thank you and enjoy the rest of the day yes <laughs> we will. thank you thank you Hello, my name is Ezekiel. Hi, I'm Faith. I'm Hope. This is an important message for the entrepreneurs, for the author, for the musician, for the artist, for the poet, for the cook, for the dancer. We are building a media platform to empower you all, to make your dreams real, all for the glory of God. Now more than ever, we need creative believers to partner with us for the epic journey that will bring forth revival, reach the lost, and empower faith-based visionaries. Media One Entertainment Group is launching our first television show on Stir.com. Your gifts, your talents, your businesses will be displayed across the nation on Stir.com. Partner with us, advertise with us, network with us, 
and connect with us. Help us reach our goal of $30,000. Your support help us empower several different ministries, the entrepreneurs, businesses, and talented men and women of God all over the world. We are stronger together than we ever will be separated. Help us unite the body of Christ. Lead the lost to Jesus and tell the world that Jesus is coming soon. Join the movement. Go to comingsoonjesus.org and get the Coming Soon Jesus shirt and check out all of our other faith-based products. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Hallelujah.
these crazy, tyrannical governmental leaders that think they can tell the church when and how to worship. I just want to release some really good theology for you guys. We as believers, we never allow the government to tell us when and how to worship God. Give you that, oh, yeah, but yeah. I don't wanna do that. 
no. So come me some slack. Me some I've been hurt so bad. Oh, no, I stopped in that glass. No, no, and I still no. got particles in my feet. That's why I walk without no relief. Without you try to hold me up, but I hold me down. And I will not let myself breathe. And it ain't your fault, it's on me. I'm just trying to help you see that I really need y'all to pray. That I can find a real me someday. Pray for me. Just really need to pray to be. Get to see when I'm in front of all to see, all to see. I get tired of being someone else. I don't know how to be my own self. So I can lose myself sometimes when I'm right in front of all these eyes. I get tired of being someone else. I don't know how to be my own self. So I can lose myself sometimes.